Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers reasonable suspicion, surveillance, and trespassing, and is brought to us by I Know My Rights' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On September 16th, 2021, Auditor Jane McWhorter was filming in a parking lot outside the Middletown Police Department in Middletown, Ohio, when the alarm for a nearby police vehicle began to sound. The video does not show what caused the alarm to trigger, and shortly after the alarm went off, Officer Shioki Reese of the Middletown Police Department approached Ms. McWhorter and began to question her. I don't answer questions. That's fine. You don't need to turn I your... I just want to make sure I know why you're setting off an alarm on the... I was over there when the alarm went off and I could show you on tape. Okay. So whoever car that is, tell them not to hit their alarm because somebody's out here walking around. All right, well, just make sure you're not touching the cruisers. I can touch them. They're ours. Like, really, you think like, someone can't touch a cruiser? They're paid for by the city. The police are, is there something that you don't need? give me, don't give me illegal directives. Are you, are you looking for something? Does, did I ask for you? Did I go in there and ask for anybody? No, but if you need somebody's assistance, we can help you. If I needed assistance, I would go in there. The number's still 911, right? 4425-7701. Okay, did I call? Uh, apparently you did. No. Just tell whoever set their alarm off. They're funny. Now y'all gonna call the cops like you're all cute. I'm standing right at a police station. I don't have to call the cops. I am the cop. Exactly, which is stupid. So why don't you get them for whoever set their panic alarm off? You're the one that was around at me. I was over there. I got it all on tape. When Officer Reese arrived on the scene, she witnessed Ms. McWhorter standing in the parking lot near the vehicle with the sounding alarm. It's important to note that even if Officer Reese did not have reasonable suspicion to detain Ms. McWhorter, she would still be within her authority to conduct an investigation of the situation and consensually question Ms. McWhorter. However, because of Ms. McWhorter's proximity to the vehicle and the absence of other individuals in the area, a court would likely conclude that Officer Reese would have the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Ms. McWhorter while investigating the sounding alarm. When Evaluating whether an officer had the reasonable suspicion needed to conduct a Terry stop, courts look at the totality of circumstances to determine if the standard was met. And in this analysis, an individual's location can be a significant factor in deciding whether a stop is lawful. In the 2000 case of Illinois versus Wardlow, the Supreme Court held that, quote, an individual's presence in an area of expected criminal activity, standing alone, is not enough to support a reasonable, particularized suspicion that the person is committing a crime. But officers are not required to ignore the relevant characteristics of a location in determining whether the circumstances are sufficiently suspicious to warrant further investigation. While the Wardlow case involved a quote-unquote high crime area, other courts have reached similar conclusions about detaining individuals found in the proximity of a recently perpetrated offense. For example, in the 2003 case of United States versus Wimbush, the Seventh Circuit determined that the fact that a suspect was found eight blocks away from a reported crime was relevant to a reasonable suspicion analysis. And in the 2006 case of U.S. versus Goodrich, the Third Circuit held that an individual's, quote, geographical and temporal proximity to the scene of a reported theft in progress was a, quote, important factor militating strongly in favor of the validity of the stop. Similarly, in the 2019 case of State v. Hairston, which involved a Terry stop of an individual who was found near a location where gunshots were fired, the Supreme Court of Ohio held that, quote, the most important considerations are that the stop occurred very close in time to the gunshots, and Hairston was the only person in the area from which the shots emanated. Therefore, it seems probable that a court would determine that Officer Reese could have lawfully detained Ms. McWhorter based on a reasonable suspicion of potential criminal activity because of the nearby sounding car alarm. Do you need anything? Did I ask for anything? Yeah, a Big Mac and some fries would be good. How about you go get it? I would like a large coke with that. That's about all you guys are good for anyway. Do you need anything else? No, I don't. I was yeah. just walking around the police station, which is my right. Somebody set off their alarm. Why don't you go talk to them? Because when I came out, I seen you walking along. I was right there when it went off. I was over there. Okay. Would you like to go watch the tape? Yeah. Do you need to file a police report or anything? Not at the moment. I mean, if I wanted to file a report, I wouldn't be standing out here with a video camera. I would walk in there, but while we're on the subject, maybe you can go tell the chief of police to give me a call back since I've waited two days. And they won't let me make an appointment to talk to him. So... Have you tried emailing him? Yeah, and I've emailed him over two times and no response. So you're going to stand out here the whole time I record? No. Waste taxpayers' monies with your vehicles running? Making sure nobody was 
breaking into this cruiser. So someone with a video camera looks suspicious. In today's age, yes. Yeah. Especially in today's when, age? Yes. Especially yes. When, when are you got? Oh, right. wow. Especially in today's age, yes. Is it illegal? Is it illegal? No, but it is suspicious. Is okay. it a misdemeanor or a felony? Uh, it is suspicious. I didn't say it was illegal. Photography is not a suspicion. Maybe you should learn that law. Okay. You're in investigations. I am. That's what they say. Photography is not a crime, and it cannot be condemned a crime. But also it could be construed as counter surveillance. No, it can't. Yes, it can. No, it Inst can't. Inst Here, Officer Jordan claims that videotaping can be considered, quote, counter surveillance. However, because counter surveillance involves detecting and preventing surveillance, which would not typically involve filming, it seems more likely that Officer Jordan is referring to surveillance, which means closely observing a location, potentially to scope it out for future criminal activity. While Ohio law does not explicitly prohibit the use of video cameras for surveillance in a public place, there are some circumstances where video videotaping or photographing in a public location can be considered a crime. The first scenario involves the state's wiretapping statutes, which can be found in sections 2933.51 and 2933.52 of the Ohio Revised Code, and prohibit the unauthorized interception of a, quote, oral communication. While this law generally cannot be used to prosecute activity that is protected by the First Amendment, there may be some situations where an individual could face wiretapping charges for capturing a conversation with a video camera. Additionally, section Section 2907.08 of the Ohio Revised Code defines the crime of voyeurism, which states that, quote, no person shall secretly or surreptitiously videotape, film, photograph, or otherwise record another person under or through the clothing being worn by that other person for the purpose of viewing the body of or the undergarments worn by that other person. The statute also prohibits surreptitiously invading the privacy of another to film them in the nude. Although the scope of this statute is limited, it does prohibit videotaping in public locations when it violates the privacy and bodily integrity of others in these specifically described ways. Finally, in some instances, video surveillance in preparation for a crime may be charged as the offense of attempt, which Section 5.01 of the Model Penal Code defines as purposely taking an action that constitutes, quote, a substantial step in a course of conduct planned to culminate in commission of the crime. This section of the Model Penal Code also explains that, quote, conduct shall not be held to constitute a substantial step unless it is strongly corroborative of the act criminal purpose, and identifies conducting reconnaissance of the place contemplated for the commission of the crime as an example of a substantial step that could result in an attempt conviction. Many states, including Ohio, follow the substantial step definition of attempt, with Ohio's attempt statute being codified in section 2923.02 of the Ohio Revised Code. While the text of the statute itself does not include the term substantial step, in the 1976 case of State v. Woods, the Supreme Court of Ohio adopted the model penal code standard holding that, quote, the application of this standard will depend upon both the nature of the intended crime and the facts of the particular case. A substantial step in the commission of a robbery may be quite different from that in arson, rape, or some other crime. But this standard does properly direct attention to overt acts of the defendant which convincingly demonstrate a firm purpose to commit a crime, while allowing police intervention, based upon observation of such incriminating conduct, in order to prevent the crime when the criminal intent becomes apparent. In summary, applying the relevant statutes and case law, while it is possible possible for an individual to be convicted of a crime for recording in public, the laws are highly circumstantial and fairly limited in scope. And none seem to apply to Ms. McWhorter's activity in this case. The word surveillance. Mm. Be confiscated during suspicious activity like being okay, okay, okay. You want to confiscate it? Try it. Let's go there. You need to stay back six feet. Let, that, let's go there. Virus Tr town. Try and take my camera. Okay. Better go get a search warrant. Okay. Get a search warrant. I think you all need to go back and learn some education. No, it's not. The, the, the parking lot is. No, it's not. It does not say no unauthorized personnel. And that's the, this, that's this, the this entrance door. Need, this need, this is funny. You guys are going to look so cute on YouTube again. If you want, you can go up top. Go the no, because I can go right down. in that door right there. So I'm allowed yes, to walk can. here. You exactly. Can you can go in the lobby right or you can go up top. This is a restrict no, there. This no. is police cars and... Personnel Unless you got only. the no personnel parking, I'm not parking. Okay, I'm not in yeah. a car. Okay, but, it you, says, but, but you are around police cars. And you need does, to get up top there. You need or to you leave this Our tax dollars there. pay for them, and you're okay. going to tell me this. Yeah, this okay. is the second request to leave this lot. I'm not leaving. I'll leave when I'm done with my story.
The officers request that Ms. McWhorter leave the parking lot and inform her that it is a, quote, restricted area, but Ms. McWhorter refuses to do so, arguing that her tax dollars pay for the vehicles and she should be allowed to walk there, as we have previously discussed on ATA. The fact that property is owned by the government does not mean that any citizen can access any part of it at any time. While some public property may be held open to the public, the government entity that owns or operates property also has the right to decide that the use of some areas will be restricted. In the 1966 case of Adderley v. Florida, the Supreme Court explained that, quote, the state, no less than a private owner of property, has power to preserve the property under its control for the use to which it is lawfully dedicated. The United States Constitution does not forbid a state to control the use of its own property for its own lawful, non-discriminatory purpose. In fact, under Ohio law, an individual can be convicted of criminal trespassing on restricted-use public property. According to Section 2911.21 of the Ohio Revised Code, quote, No person without privilege to do so shall knowingly enter or remain on the land or premises of another, the use of which is lawfully restricted to certain persons, purposes, modes, or hours, when the offender knows the offender is in violation of any such restriction or is reckless in that regard. The statute also prohibits refusing to leave the property after the owner, occupant, or an agent of the owner or occupant asks them to leave, and expressly states that, quote, It is no defense to a charge under this section that the land or premises involved was owned, controlled, or in custody of a public agency. However, for an individual to be convicted of criminal trespass, there must be a sufficient warning that their entry to the land is unauthorized. In the 1988 case of State v. McMechan, an Ohio Court of Appeals held that, quote, Adequate warnings of land or premises premises use restrictions can be communicated actually or constructively, that is, through the use of physical barriers, such as barricades, barriers, fences, and locks, which actually limit or bar access, or by signs at the entrance to the land or premises which inform the user of the restrictions which exist. In the McMechan case, the court found that the defendant could not be convicted of trespass because there was no evidence that a sign or another form of communication explained the restrictions on the property's use. And a court could conclude that the signs in this situation, which read police vehicle parking only, authorized parking only, and police parking only were insufficient to inform a pedestrian that they could not access the parking lot on foot. However, because the officers asked Miss McCorder to leave the property multiple times and she refused to do so, it is likely she could still be convicted of trespassing under Ohio law. This is the third and final request to leave Good. the restricted parking lot. Are you refusing? You can't give me a lawful order. Are you refusing? I'm allowed to write a story. You guys do realize you don't have signs. Yes, we do. Reserve police vehicle. It doesn't say unauthorized personnel. On top of the circle, there is a sign that says that. No, it says authorized vehicles only. It doesn't say anything about a person walking down here. Okay, now this is funny because. I already have video of being walking down here and nobody bothered me. Ms. McCorder was placed under arrest, and according to an update video she posted on her channel later the same day, was charged with criminal trespass and criminal mischief. However, online court records show that Ms. McCorder was charged with criminal trespass in the Middletown Municipal Court on September 16, 2021, with no mention of a criminal mischief charge. On September 25, 2021, Ms. McCorder posted a video showing that since her arrest, a new authorized personnel only sign had been added to the parking lot entrance, and on September 30, 2021, Ms. McCorder shared a video of Middletown officers rejecting her attempt to file a complaint and informing her she needed to resolve the issue at her upcoming court date. As of the date of this episode, the criminal charge is still pending, and it is unclear whether Ms. McCorder will be pursuing legal action against the Middletown PD. Overall, the Middletown officers get an A-, because although they seemed somewhat misinformed about the legal nuance surrounding public photography, they maintained a calm and collected attitude, offered Ms. McCorder several chances to reconsider her position, and remained within the bounds of their authority throughout the interaction. It is clear from the video that some of the officers involved in this encounter were misinformed about the First Amendment protections associated with filming in a public location. However, their misconceptions did not play any significant role in their decision to place Ms. McCorder under arrest. The Middletown officers arrested Ms. McCorder because she refused to leave a restricted area after being warned multiple times that she was not authorized to be in the police department parking lot. And whether or not Ms. McCorder was filming had no real impact on the fact that she was trespassing. The officers gave Ms. McCorder multiple chances to leave the area and offered her several alternative 
alternative locations that she could continue filming from outside the lot. I commend the Middletown officers for making a legitimate effort to respect Ms. McWhorter's First Amendment rights and for remaining composed and professional throughout the interaction. Ms. McWhorter gets an F for maintaining a hostile and confrontational attitude, displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of the limitations of free speech, and for refusing to leave the parking lot after being informed that she was trespassing. As mentioned on many episodes of ATA, no benefits can be reaped from being rude to members of law enforcement, and being confrontational will almost never translate into a well-articulated defense if the case reaches a courtroom. Ms. McWhorter was also operating on the basis of several misconceptions regarding the First Amendment, but unlike the Middletown office, Officers, her misconceptions directly affected the outcome of this encounter and ultimately resulted in her arrest. Understanding the protections offered to citizens by the Constitution is a necessary element of any successful audit, but understanding the limitations associated with those protections is equally important, and I would caution Ms. McWhorter to gain a deeper understanding of those limitations before conducting more audits. At no point during the interaction did Ms. McWhorter invoke her Fifth Amendment right to silence, and it is likely that many of her statements to the officers will be used against her in her upcoming court case. While I appreciate Ms. McWhorter's passion for civilian rights, I believe that this interaction highlights the importance of doing your due diligence before attempting to carry out an audit. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.